governor says he is not going to resign, but tonight there is wild speculation about his future and a curious move from the woman who, who would be next in line to succeed him. Welcome everybody to Coin6 News at 5. I'm Ann State. I'm Jeff Gianola and let's get right to it. We've been trying to get to the bottom of this political mystery all day. Lots of rumors and stories floating around Salem at this hour, but the mystery continues. Will the governor resign? We have complete coverage with Dan Tilkin and Ken Body looking at every angle. Let's go to Dan first. He's at PDX where he was hoping to catch up with Oregon Secretary of State Kate Brown and ask her why did she suddenly return to Oregon from her trip to D.C., Dan? And Jeff, we're still trying to track her down and ask her that question. In fact, I just got off the phone with her husband who tells me it is as much a mystery to you as it is to me. Whatever the reason, it's got Oregon politics buzzing wondering if Oregon Governor John Kitzhaber is resigning. Now, Kate Brown, she was in Washington, D.C. at the conference of the National Association of Secretaries of State. In fact, she is the president of that group. If you read their press release, she is the headliner mentioned in the very first sentence. Now, the conference has started yesterday. It goes all week, but Kate Brown, she abruptly left. That caused so many questions about whether she was preparing to take Kitzhaber's place. He put out this statement. It reads, let me be as clear as I was last week that I have no intention of resigning as governor of the state of Oregon. I was elected to do a job for the people of this great state, and I intend to continue to do so. Kate Brown's spokesman talked with our Ken Body, trying to get to the bottom of why she's back. At this point, I do not have any information on the reason for her early departure. I just know that she is coming back two days early. Has she been preparing at all? Kate Brown's husband told me he talked to her last night and she told him she would explain more when she got back. He understands that she is the most wanted person in Oregon to talk to right now, besides the governor. He told me the reason she is returning is not for personal reasons like an illness or something like a family emergency. But again, Governor John Kitzhaber, despite all the ethics questions around him, he is saying he is not resigning. Back to you at the station. And thank you so much. And our coverage continues right now from Oregon's capital, where, of course, talk of the governor's future is dominating the halls of the legislature. Ken Body is live in Salem. Ken, you found out the governor may be testing how much political clout he has left there? That's right, Jeff and Ann. As a matter of fact, I learned that Kitzhaber had separate meetings yesterday with both House Speaker Tina Kotek and Senate President Peter Courtney. Now, none of their staff would tell me what those meetings were about. But considering all the events of the past week and the editorials calling for Kitzhaber's resignation, as well as the sudden return of Kate Brown to the state, people here in the Capitol, even lobbyists, are clamoring for information about the governor's future. He has repeatedly said he's not resigning. Despite the inquiry by the state attorney general's office into girlfriend Sylvia Hayes allegedly exerting improper influence on behalf of paid interests, and the State Ethics Commission also looking into Sylvia Hayes' role in the governor's office. If Kitzhaber resigns, then Sylvia Hayes' story becomes interesting, but it's no longer crucial to what's going on in terms of government. It'll be looking at saying, well, will Kitzhaber and Hayes be uh, prosecuted after he's left office? It'll be a, an interesting story, but not a central story to what's going on in Oregon. At this point, that's still a big if. As you heard, the governor stated once again today that he does not plan to resign, but it appears the political pressure is mounting. Now, several Oregon governors have resigned in the past, but not under a cloud of scandal. Most went on to take U.S. Senate seats and one resigned for health reasons. We haven't heard anything today from Sylvia Hayes. Live at the state capitol in Salem, Ken Body, Coin 6 News. Ken, thank you. I'm joined by Ben Gaskins, political science professor at Lewis and Clark College. Ben, thank you for being here. And first thank of you. all, let's get back to something Ken said. You know, the governor released that statement just a few hours ago saying, I have no intention of resigning. How much stock do you put in that statement? You, you don't put 
too much. I mean, I think right now he realizes that he's going to have to put up a, a face that says that he's still not guilty of any wrongdoing and that he has no plans on going anywhere. Those kinds of things can change very quickly as the political tides turn and as the tide of public opinion uh, turns against him and as more allegations come out. Uh, but right now, that's what you would expect the governor to say. Okay, let's talk about the rules and regulations mm -hmm. here in Oregon because we're very unusual. Mm -hmm. Most states, I think 43 states, mm -hmm. have a lieutenant governor right. who would take over if the governor had to resign. Uh, Oregon's one of just uh, two other states mm -hmm. where a secretary of state mm -hmm. takes over. Uh, what about Oregon law? You know, it is a little interesting. So what would happen if the governor does resign is that Kate Brown, the secretary of state, would become uh, a governor for the next uh, about a year and a half until the next biennial election in 2016. 2016. Right, exactly. And then we would have an election to elect someone to fill out the remainder of his term, the last two years of Kitzhaber's term. And in the meantime, uh, the Secretary of State would nominate someone to take her place as act acting Secretary of State while she took over uh, the governor's mansion. So it's, it's very interesting. It's usual for the lieutenant governor to take on this position, but the Oregon doesn't we have it. We don't have that post here exactly. in Oregon. We don't have it. Mm -hmm. What do you think's going on behind the scenes in Salem right now? All day long we have stories, we have rumors coming out, we know things are happening down there. What do you think is going on behind the scenes with the key Democrats right now, those who are closest to the governor? I think the Democrats are trying to figure out, is Kitzhaber going to survive this? If they think there's a reasonable chance that he survives and can become a productive governor, they might stand behind him. If they get the sense that this is going downhill and there's no way that he is able to continue um, as governor in wake of these allegations, then I think they're going to try to come up with a strategy of what happens next. How do we pl replace him? How do we go on from this? Okay, Ben. As always, thank you for your perspective, and we'll send it back to you. Okay, thank you so much. More on something you both mentioned. Taking a look right now at the Secretary of State Kate Brown's career. We have learned that she has been in Oregon politics for more than two decades, starting in the House of Representatives in the early 1990s. After two terms, she was then elected to the Oregon Senate in 1996. In 2004, she became the first woman to serve as Senate Majority Leader. Brown was first elected to Secretary of State in 2008. She was re-elected in 2012. Obviously, we will continue to dig for new information on this breaking news and give you any updates throughout the newscast. And you can stay up to date online as well on our website, coin.com.